Uh, greetings to you once again, and uh, happy anniversary to Ron and Susan Boyer. It's coming up. And um, today I'd like to talk to you about uh, Bethlehem, uh, the city or the town where Christ was born. And I believe uh, the Morrisons are going there to the Holy Land in a few weeks, so let's keep them in our prayers too. And before we start, I'd like to show some uh, slides of Bethlehem and um, city that is not far from uh, Jerusalem, actually. So if you can uh, display that, I can see here the map of Bethlehem uh, during the time of Jesus. And it's um, processing right now. <laughs> Okay, so you see the map over there. I can see it also, the map here below here. As you can see, uh, Bethlehem Tower below, there is, it's kind of just uh, a little below of uh, Jerusalem, but it's down there. Uh, it's a, you know, a sleepy town, actually. Let's go on to the next slide. Now, when we went there, uh, before we went to Bethlehem, we went to this church, uh, you know, where they feel that where the shepherds were you know, close to Bethlehem. And in fact, while we were there, uh, the church with the shepherds, uh, you know, they have this church. The uh, tour guide says, over there, you know, pointed us, is uh, Bethlehem, that area, kind of showing us where, where it is. And maybe the shepherds were looking at the star at the time. Uh, so from this area that you can see that church, uh, um, where the shepherds, they thought, were. Let's move on. And this is just overlooking, you know, this is, again, you can imagine, this is uh, today, but these are the, uh, the grassy land where uh, the shepherds may likely be. Um, it's still grassy, that area, kind of outside the area. Let's move on. And this is uh, modern day Bethlehem, kind of modern now with a lot of uh, buildings, a lot of churches. It's a tourist spot. It is actually uh, managed by um, uh, not Israel anymore, West Bank, that area. Uh, but they still cater and they still serve uh, tourists, even though they are Christians, but they serve them uh, to be able to see and tour. Let's move on to the next uh, slide. Now, this is the entrance. Uh, this is for the birth. We go to this huge old church, and the line was actually long, and then you have to go into this. There is our tour guide, you know, um, showing us and take, telling us, be careful, you know, the steps could be uh, slippery, but we have to go there one by one, go deep down into where they felt Christ was born. This is in Bethlehem. Next slide. And uh, probably you know her. This is a member, Nancy Stonic. And so she paused and took a picture. That's the place, you know, with, on that floor, that's the place where they thought Christ uh, was born. Move on. A, Another picture of that. Let's move on to another one. And uh, this, uh, I, I got this from Google, but this where there are no people. And so you kind of step down, you know, from that top, you go down the steps and then you, you go up. And when we were down there, there was another group and they were singing songs, you know, people are celebrating. And next one. You know, this uh, Bethlehem, and I was looking for the stars, for the star. And I found another star. <laughs> I thought it's kind of funny. <laughs> you know, have these stars and bucks, you know, another kind of star in Bethlehem uh, while we were walking out of the uh, church. Now, in Luke 2, verse 4 to 8, let me just go to, I'm done with the slides. Luke 2, 4 to 8. Luke 2, verse 4 to verses, verse 8. It says, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Beth means house. Lehem means bread, house of bread. Because he was of the house and the lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, verse 5, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought, verse 7, brought forth her firstborn and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And verse 8, and they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And we'll hear more of this story from uh, Pastor Mike as he 
goes deeper into the story and perhaps things that uh, we didn't fully understand. So at that particular time, Bethlehem, that town, uh, is a picture of a, a sleepy, unassuming town that serves as, as the setting, you know, kind of a quiet, sleepy, small town that God chose to be a setting for an exceptional, an extraordinary event in history, and an event that enters our history that is just amazing. In fact, every year, we, you know, people celebrate Christmas and focus on this town, this unassuming town. But at that first Christmas, it's most likely, there was no doubt many of the people living in Bethlehem at the time of Jesus had no idea that there was something exceptional. They had no idea or they had no realization that there is something marvelous that was happening at that night. They didn't have the same thinking as we have today. Otherwise, if they did, if they knew that the king of kings you know, is coming, boy, it's going to be crowded with people. But nobody knew. So, um, so we, as we look back to the birth of Christ, uh, we see here that uh, uh, they were totally unaware, totally unaware of this important event. As I mentioned, Bethlehem was not, you know, Th that big city at that time. Now, on a normal day, that you know, this may seem kind of odd to us today because we celebrate Christmas every year. But the first, the people at that time, the first Christmas was uh, just like any other regular day for most people. Just imagine that Bethlehem. Just like any other regular day uh, at that particular time. And yet, Bethlehem is very much the kind of setting that God chose, where the gospel, the you know, first that history took place. Not with the resounding blow of trumpets as when Christ will come back, you know, for the whole town to see, you know, with all this pompous, you know, big, big, display or nothing of that sort, you know, but uh, it was quiet and most people didn't know, only very few people. So Jesus spent most of his ministry, when we look at the life of Jesus, and he spent most of his ministry uh, teaching us uh, certain metaphors for the kingdom. Metaphor or symbols, you know, what are symbols or metaphors of Jesus? Where he said the kingdom of God is like a seed planted in the ground. See, that's kind of hidden, you know. The kingdom of God is like a buried treasure. That's another metaphor. A seed under the ground, a buried treasure, a perfect pearl, just, just that one pearl. I mean, those are important, seeds and treasure and so forth. But in the metaphors that Christ used, they are small, they were buried, they were hidden, but very valuable and very important. In the same way, I'm using that as an analogy, in the same way that many people did not notice the birth of Jesus, vast majority of our thoughts in our minds, a lot of our thoughts, a lot of our prayers, a lot of our ministry, a lot of our actions for the advancement of the kingdom goes unnoticed. When you pray silently for somebody, People don't even know about it. When you encourage somebody who is depressed or down, most people don't know about it. When there's a lot of distress, we do, we do our part, you know, in a small way. You know, we did our own, our own neighbor's activity here, event. We're happy, but the world didn't know it. A lot, most people didn't know it. There are many things that we do for God, that we do for the kingdom, that often goes unnoticed. In the same way that God was doing something marvelous in the sleepy town of Bethlehem, and people did not know it, kind of in the same way. And that's why it's kind of interesting when Paul himself said that God chose the lowly things of the world, right, to confound the wise. I mean, the way God works, the way the Spirit of God works is totally different from how 
uh, people may think. God could have said, oh, my son is going to be born. I want him to be born in Rome. You know? I want him to be born in some big city. You know, at that particular time, uh, there will be blowing up trumpets and harp and all this drums and music and so forth. But no, there were only a few shepherds. Uh, one is Gian over there. <laughs> I saw Jesus, I saw the Messiah. I mean, there's very few shepherds who responded to the invitation of angels. Very few. So the simplicity, the humility of Christ's birth is in, and it's in itself an example. That simplicity in the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem is an example how God works in our world frequently through the simple, through the normal, through the mundane, through the ordinary. And yet what makes those things extraordinary is the very presence of God with us. God with us, Emmanuel. You know, we were seeing the first Noel. That is short for Emmanuel, just in case you may not know. Uh, and yet God makes things wonderful. God with us. The presence of God in us makes everything important. So some of us may think that, you know, we are insignificant. You know, we are nobody. Yeah, we think that way. I think that way. But from the scriptures, understand that you are a special child of God. You are precious. There is a miracle that is happening in you. There is a, some kind of maturity. You are growing into the maturity of Christ. So I pray today as we close that you and I may take a look at the small, seemingly normal, boring places where God is working and moving. Pray for the Spirit of God to give you eyes of faith that you recognize the work of God in the simple things. Are you open to the passing of God's hand among you? Even others don't notice it. Are you excited with what God is doing in you? Even others don't know it. It's still God. So let's simply take a moment and examine the places where God might be operating in our Bethlehems, in our simple places. Where is it that God is working in your life right now? Stop and reflect. Reflect. And sometimes when we don't stop and reflect, we miss those Movements of God, just like a lot of people miss Christ's birth. So ask God to bring forth how he has been quietly working in your life. Pray, God, please show me the Jesus in my Bethlehem. Ask God for eyes of faith, better eyes to see this unbelievable work of God in your life. Amen.